Good morning, one and all. Myself, Lama Sarkhot from Department of Biotechnology. I'm here to deal with a topic that is classification of nutraceuticals. Now, before we begin with what is uh, classification of nutraceuticals, I'd like to give you a introduction to nutraceuticals. Now, first of all, what are nutraceuticals? They are also known as functional foods or uh, natural or fortified products or products that can be used for therapeutic purposes. Hence, the term nutraceuticals or functional foods and they can be classified on the basis of their natural sources, the pharmacological conditions or as per their chemical constitution of the product. Now, first, on the basis of natural sources, it can be classified as the product that could be obtained from plants or animals or minerals or even microbial sources. For example, let's say from plants, you can say ascorbic acid or vitamin C could be called as a nutraceutical obtained from oranges, which is a plant product, a fruit. Then the nutraceuticals which are classified as per their chemical groupings. Substances which are established for nutritional functions such as vitamins, minerals, amino acids and fatty acids which are the nutrients are also known as nutraceuticals. Herbs or botanical products are as concentrates or extracts for, are used for herbal purposes or herbal therapies. Reagents derived from other sources for example pyruvate, chondroitin sulfate, steroid hormone precursors. They serve as specific functions such as sport nutrition or weight loss supplements, fortified conventional foods and meal replacements or dietary supplements. For example, we can talk about the plant protein or animal protein which are consumed by people that are uh, working out or people that go to gym or a sports person or an athlete. This could also come under an example of a nutraceutical. Now the food sources used as nutraceutical are classified or are all natural and can be categorized as first the dietary fiber, second prebiotics, uh, third probiotics, fourth polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFA, PUFA, antioxidants and polyphenols. The first three that is dietary fiber, prebiotics and probiotics have been dealt by Ms. Rupali Nanekar. So I will be continuing with uh, PUFA, the antioxidants and the polyphenols. Now the first one that is polyunsaturated fatty acids. They are divided into two groups. The two major groups that is omega-3 fatty acid and omega-6 fatty acid or omega-3 and 6 polyunsaturated fatty acids acids which differ due to their position in where the first double C bond is located. As you can see in this diagram, the first double bond or the first double bond in the omega-3 fatty acid is at the third position. Whereas in the second diagram, you can see that the first double bond is at the sixth position. Hence the name omega-3 fatty acid and omega-6 fatty acid. You can also see there is one more example that is omega-9 fatty acid which is the first carbon double bond at the 9 position and the name or the general terms for those are linoleic acid or oh sorry linolenic acid for omega-3 fatty acid, linoleic acid for omega-6 fatty acid and oleic acid for omega-9 fatty acid. Now the omega-3 fatty acid is mainly involved with alpha linolenic acid observed in oil extracts from plants and eucosapentanoic acid that is EPA and docosahexanoic acid which is detected in oil extracted from fish or aquatic animals. Now very important point to be noted is that these fatty acids are also known as essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids as in the acids that cannot be synthesized by a human body However, they are very necessary for a person's growth and development and if a person is lacking from these fatty acids or if a person does not have enough essential fatty acids, they suffer from a severe disorder or certain severe skin disorders which is phy phynoderma or it is also known as a toad skin disease. They are able to protect the heart disease by decreasing the occurrence of erythromas and uh, reducing the serum triglycer uh, salglycerol levels as well. So for skin, these uh, omega-3 fatty acids are very good for skin, they are good for heart disease and these can be used as a therapy for these particular problems. 
Now, what are the examples of omega-3 fatty acid? Like I said, alpha-linoleic acid is one of the major examples. And how to consume? Or what are the food products through which you can consume these fatty acids? Nowadays, flax seeds have become very popular for containing omega-3 fatty acids, especially the alpha-linoleic acid, the lignin and protein hydrolyte. So if you are looking for consuming uh, omega-3 fatty acid as a nutraceutical, you should go for consuming the flax seeds or flaxseed oil to uh, salads or you can use them in your, in your raw preparation or you can also directly consume flax seeds in many different preparations directly as a seed form or salad form or powdered form as well. The oil removed from flaxseed plant seeds known as the polyunsaturated oil contains large amount of alpha linoleic acid which is around 54 to 57 percent of its weight of total fatty acids and other useful oils such as gamma linoleic acid beneficial for skin diseases premenstrual pains and conjugated linoleic acid is available in meat as well as dairy products so what are we looking for we are looking for consumption of omega-3 fatty acids as a nutraceutical for a beneficial skin for a beneficial hair premenstrual pain conjugated other diseases even for heart diseases so how are you going to consume them you can directly consume them as it in its own form or in an oil form you can consume them or there are other products that are non-vegetarian products like for example meat and dairy and in case of vegetarian products flaxseed is a major example of a, a, a omega-3 fatty acid that you can consume for or as a nutraceutical. Now what would be the daily doses of omega-3 fatty acid that is prescribed for a person? So according to the WHO the uh, recommended daily dose is 0.7 grams per day. According to the ICMR, it's 1.6 grams for male and 1.1 grams for female. And British Nutritional Foundation, it is 1 to 1.5 gram per day. So you can see, according to all the three organizations, the intake or dose of omega-3 fatty acid lies between 1 to 1.5 grams per day for both male as well as female. These are certain references. Uh, you can go through these references for more detail about the same topic. Thank you, everyone.